All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Yes, video is working. Audio seems to be working. Oh, my mic drooped while oh, I was in the other room. Good and tight. There we go. Okay. So this is Lands of Galzir. I have the neoprene mat, which is, uh, as you can see, a little... Yeah, a little... A little fresh still. Uh, I haven't fully finished because I didn't want to open the Book of Adventures off stream, but we are playing as more the Frilled Lizard. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> All right. So let's start new game. It does have some sounds here. Let's see. Can you guys see that? No. We brighten it up. There we go, and I'll have to, yep, hold at an angle so that it's not completely invisible. All right. Oop, and let me... Turn off my notifications. All right. So we are starting in February. And we'll start on Monday. I'm going to turn off this music. Because you guys can hear the music. Uh, that I'm playing right now. And let me know if that's too loud or anything, alright? Alright, actually, let me scoot this a little. So I can read chat from a distance. Alright. Let's see. Start your adventure on page 85. But first, let me double check. I believe, yeah. So, February. Winter's bite is slowly weakening and dreams of spring glimmer on the horizon. Many prefer to stay indoors, but rather others enjoy the last winter activities while they can. Use the winter side of both the game board and location cards, which we have. And then shuffle 267 into the event deck, which is in this card library, which I did a stream where I went and uh, uh, sleeved up all of those. You're playing Boomir, sweet. Uh, yeah, we're playing as Moor, which you can see over in the corner here. Moor. And I need to find 267 to put into the event deck. There we go. That's another event for February. And we will shuffle that in. Do -do 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 -do. All right, hold, and this will go, uh, we'll go for, wait, no, did I do that wrong? I think I might not have needed to do that yet. Hold on, checking the rules. Ah. Okay, I messed up. I wasn't supposed to do that yet, so let me take 267 back out. Oh, 
Oh, it ended up on the top. Okay. We'll put 267 back. Finding where it goes. Hold on. There we go. Apologies, this is my first time playing, so... Uh, still pretty fresh to how all of the stuff works. So yeah, we're in February. Got it. We're playing Harmony. Um, and we have eight turns. So let me actually... Uh, nope, that's the dice. Where are the tokens? Where did I put those? There we go. And I don't believe it matters which tokens as long as they match. So let's find a matching pair. How about this? All right, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight days. All right. He's back in. the path, but we'll keep them out here. I don't feel like putting them all back. I'll probably have to shake them out again later anyways, and we'll just take out the prestige markers. There we go. It's a bit sloppy, but it's... <coughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing, just a minor thing that I, I have trouble with with this game is I expected, like, the notice board and the events to have, like, slots on here, and especially there's so much space. Empty space in here. I mean, it looks more like a map, which is nice, but yeah, like the compass up top. I don't really need that. That would have been a great spot for, like, an uh, event deck or maybe over here, you know? I don't know. I digress. That's just... Uh graphic design stuff. Let's see. All right. So now we are starting with Chasing Legends Part 1. You've come to Galzir in search of White Fang, the hero of your favorite childhood stories, and there's no better way to start them from the very beginning. During setup, do not place your figure on the game board. I have not, and this cannot be abandoned. So we are going to start our adventure on Story 85. Eighty-five. Finally, you've arrived at the beginning, at the first page of a great story. You peer down at the outskirts of a town nestled between great mountains like in a cradle. It looks unassuming at a glance, but appearances can be deceiving, as once upon a time, a legend was born here. Hurrying along the forest road, you can barely contain yourself as you imagine the adventure ahead. After all, you've dreamed of this since you were a young, frilled lizard. You'd follow in the footsteps of your hero, and you'd make this story your own. Move the adventurer's figure to Chabar, which is up here. There we go. Head into town. As you approach Chabar, your frill unfolds as your imagination races. In a flash, you're back sitting in your grandma's lap, listening to her stories. Among those, tales of White Fang's adventures were always your favorites, and you heard them over and over, eyes wide in childlike wonder. Now those same stories were coming to life right before those same eyes. Rumors say that no one's seen the legendary adventurer in years, decades even. No one knows where he's gone or even what his real name is, but that's about to change, because you've decided to meet your idol in person. You even brought along the treasure your grandma gave you, your prized possession that once belonged to White Fang himself. Give random a uh, 100 card from the library to the adventurer. All right. Got this here, and we'll just go with the one right up top. Sledgehammer. We have a sledgehammer. Okay. The blunt force of a sledgehammer is unparalleled, but properly directing the utter destructive power can sometimes be an issue. So if uh, force, get two. Fight, convert two. Sword and one eye into four. Success, I believe. Yeah, I'm still fresh to this, so I won't remember all of the terms. But we've got a sledgehammer. Continue. All right. In the town, you meet a group of eager polecat cubs who join your way, 
who join your way to a humble, ordinary-looking farmhouse. It's actually far from ordinary, however, but a local attraction, the childhood home of White Fang. The inside looks like a museum filled with memorabilia of White Fang's many adventurers and visitors examining them. Except one area, which looks to be a bedroom closed off by a velvet rope at the doorway. Is all of this really related to him? Standing there, you close your eyes and immerse yourself in your hero's legacy and story, now closer than ever before. When you open your eyes again, the cubs are looking at you, wanting to see why you came here. How should you proceed in this pilgrimage of yours? Reminder, after the adventurer chooses an option, select it before they resolve the skill check. <coughs> All right, we can investigate the memorabilia or sneak into the bedroom. Hmm. Uh, if I investigate the memorabilia, it's a little harder, but I can get to those dice. Let's let's play it. A little sneaky here, I think. We'll go with investigate the memorabilia. All right, reminder. Uh, da, da, da. Yep. Okay. Let's. No, nope. where's the dice? Where did I put the dice? There's the dice. All right, I'm gonna load the dice into the game. Tray. And yeah, we're gonna use the two communications and three of the standard dice. All right. Let's roll them. Okay, medium needs two. I think I can manage. Uh, not quite. So let's try that one more time. Come on, baby. Uh, nope. Even worse. That's a complete failure. All right. Uh, yep. Yeah, zero to one. You lose yourself in the collection, barely able to focus on anything in particular, your excitement overflowing like a flooding river. Jumping from one item to the next, you try to experience everything at once. If you didn't have a quest to complete, you can move in here. So there's a ton of stuff related to your favorite hero, and the place simply oozes stories. When you finally manage to suppress your gleeful indulgence, you notice the amused expressions on the cubs' faces. A few other visitors are looking at you as well. You push all the other stuff aside, as there are several eyes on you now. A half of you yearns to share your favorite stories of your hero's journey, but the other half burns with desire to let the world hear of more and the ambitions those stories have awakened. After the adventurer chooses an option, yep, um, all right, declare my ambitions or recall White Fang's adventures. Hmm. Let's declare the ambitions. That's in character. All right. So we're gonna switch out one of the black dice for a green die. All right. And we're going for the masks. Nothing. Oh, come on. I only need two. Yeah, there we go, there's two. All right. Two to three, you give a passionate speech, stating that you'll be the one to find White Fang, proudly bearing his torch and becoming a great adventurer yourself. The crowd responds to your declaration with cheers, happy faces, and well wishes. Not quite everyone seems sure, but you're certain they'll soon they'll learn soon enough after they witness you in action. Satisfied, you're eager to continue to Sarewar to seek out White Fang's old enemy. But before you can, the cubs run to you, and they're carrying something. We found this lying around, one says, and we want you to have it. Tell White Fang we said hi. You earn one prestige. Doo -doo. It's slightly too tall, so, uh, in fact, yeah, let me. There we go. Okay. Uh, return chasing legends from the adventurer to the library. All right.
returned. Give random 200. Feather duster, made from the fallen plumage of various feather folk. Dusters are commonly used for cleaning. That's not to say there aren't other uses for a, sac a stack of ticklish fluff. So search, we get one success and re-roll up to one die and fight, convert up to two thief into one success each. Ooh. And then give 220 from the library to the adventurer. Two twenty, Chasing Legends Part Two. You strengthened your resolve by visiting the birthplace of Whitefang, your hero. Now you just have to find him and to make your dream come true. You should go question Kafarit, White Wang Fang's old, <laughs> White Fang's old storied enemy cannot be abandoned. All right, so visit Kafarit's home at Sarewar. So that's over there. Okay, let's get the dice out of the way. Fix all that up, cool. And then, uh, one second, I'm gonna get some water. Okay, sorry, there's a lot of reading. Um, let me know if the, if the music is too loud or anything. I think I said it correct, but, you know, if it's too loud for any of you, I can turn it down or turn it up, whatever needs to be. I have it set so that it'll kind of duck down anytime I'm talking. Okay, so we need to get to Sarewar, or we got some other stuff going on. So first off, Sarewar gets a quest token. Then we have over here, so maybe we should do some side stuff first. Yeah, let's see what we got. So, we got two at Teshun, which is evil farmers are treating child workers badly. That's... Ooh, that's some heavy stuff. Uh, this must stop. Somebody help! From Gildia, the long-tailed duck. We also have, we request help in finding one of our members who hasn't returned from her assignment. Violet Arm Mercenaries. And then over in Yezdin, right next to us, uh, I have lost something very dear and close to me. Assistance in reacquiring it kindly requested. Ban the Alpine Marmot. So, the question then is, do we move towards Yezdin or Sarawar? Because I definitely want to deal with these kids. I feel like, character-wise, I would... <laughs> more would definitely not be okay with that. But... Okay, music is dropping as I set it up, but at the same time, it's quite a ways away. That's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I guess for now, I'll just move down. I'll move, I'll move over to Yezdin because I'm only gonna get further away from it. So, one, two, and then, um, hold on, I gotta hit end of scene there. Okay. So, Book of Ventures over there, and then, one second. Okay, we gotta check for mandatory scenes. There aren't any. Then, quest card. Don't have any relevant quest cards right now. Venture status card. Companion card, location card with your figure. Uh, nope. Oh, I could have checked. Ah, that's fine. Um, local status card. Event card. Let's do the event card. Since we're in the middle of nowhere. So we're in the mountains. Do do. Event 79. So let's see. It's Monday. So not that. Settlement. No. Grassland, no. Forest Hill Mountain. So we're on 61. Alright. Let's pull 61 out of the deck here. No, that's the storybook. What am I thinking? <coughs> Excuse me. It's 61. 
As you travel on the wooded slopes, three pangolin children race down the bend. In a flurry of jumbled pleas, they beg for your help. Following them around the next turn, you see their mother kneeling on the road and bandaging the head of her wounded husband. The father huffs. Some wolverine and were raven jumped us. Took our blue card and knocks at gunpoint. Can you help us get our car back? It's our livelihood, the wife pleads. I must get my husband treated in the nearest inn. Well, yeah, I'm gonna help out. Help the pangolins. You rush up the path, hoping to catch up. Within minutes, you meet a party of polecats. What happens? I'm not gonna click those. Well, hold on. Let me go off, off camera for a second. Oh, okay. So yeah, when you hit them, it just pulls up a picture and a little description. That's cute. What do the pangolins look like? <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, shrugging, they tell you they haven't seen it. You backtrack along the road and check the outlying brush, coming across a pangolin doll. Pushing further into the foli foliage, you spot wagon tracks. Following them, the tracks lead you to a hollow that holds a mound, fitted with a door and a chimney emitting smoke. Out front, a half-plundered blue cart sits with an ox. We have a cord tag. No. Enter the mound and fight. I do have a weapon that'll help me in fighting, or come up with another plan. I have two items that are good for fighting. Is that really what more would do? Yeah, let's let's go with that. Is that well? Hmm. I think coming up with another plan. Uh, I'm thinking coming up with another plan. All right. So let's see, we have, uh, yep, yeah, same one that we had before. Uh, no relevant tags. So let's roll it. And we're going for book. We got one book. I think I can do better than that. Two books. No, three books. Perfect. All right, two to three. An idea strikes. You quietly gather moss and twigs, swiftly scamper up the mound and clog the chimney with all your plucked debris. In minutes, you hear coughing and screaming. A wolverine stumbles out. I can't see, she cries, tripping over her own feet. You demand her to surrender, and the blinded thief submits. While tying her up, a raven ejects from the smoke and flies away while you are distracted. With the captive and all the gold goods accounted for, you take the wagon to a nearby inn where the pangolin family is waiting along with a guard patrol. The family is overjoyed that you've recovered all of their goods and reward you for your bar br 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 bravery. The guards take the wolverine off your hands. You earn one prestige. Ooh. And you gain two gold. Chunk. All right, up to 12. And then return the drawn event to the bottom of the event deck. End of scene. Then, I believe we move on to the next day. I'm just gonna double check that. I do appreciate that setup is the middle fold, so it's easy to open to. That is correct, so we're moving to Tuesday. Do do. All right. New day. So now, once again, we move up to two and resolve. So let's, uh, yep, let's hop over in here. And we're going to Yezdin. I've lost something very dear and close to me, assistance in reacquiring it, kindly requested. So, we're going to take that quest. Sleeping Malice. I live here in the temples to keep an eye on the monks on behalf of the Awakened. I can confirm that our sacred relic has been stolen and brought here. Preparations need to be made to reacquire it. Please inform my comrades in Chabar about the situation before returning with them. Bond, the Alpine Marmot Agent. Chabar, meet Bond's friends. All right, so we're gonna move this quest marker 
Back to Jabbar. Okay. So now we uh I can we move again? Okay, yeah, we can still move. So we're Gosh, are we gonna head back or are we gonna hang out here for a minute? Maybe go to the market? We got a lot of stuff, so I'm just gonna zoop, move back to the mountains. And we are going to do an event. Here we go. Thursday, no, settlement, no, grassland, forest hill, mountain. 155. Fifty-five. Right? No. What am I doing? Ah. I keep getting the uh, cards in the book mixed up, even though it shows a book right there. Oh. All right. One fifty-five. Here we go. Traveling down a mountain road, hugged by forest crags, a colossal wild boar charges out towards you. Reaching the road, it slows to a stop before fixing you with its gaze. You're not sure what the animal is about to do, but you hold your ground for the moment and wait for the creature's response. Soon it breaks its gaze and gives a short, crooked whimper as it tosses its head about and bolts off the way it came. What's that all about? I'm gonna, that sounds like a abused animal, so I'm gonna follow the boar and check out, check out what's happening. You ponder on the odd display of the creature, its strange stare, flinging its head about, the noises it made. What was the purpose of this display? Perhaps it wanted to get your attention? Maybe it's rabid. Whatever for, you decide to go investigate, following the unsubtle tracks it left in its wake, leading you towards the crags. Following the boar, you come to an old mining site with a crumbling office building. The boar digs at the building's basement window with her hooves as three piglets cry out from behind a nearby bush. Another piglet's cry, separate from the others, comes from the basement. You peer in through the ground level window. Below is a frightened piglet, bawling for its mother, unable to escape. The building does have a cellar door, but it's padlocked and chained. Do you have a music tag? Nope. Lift the piglet through the window, unlock the cellar door, or leave the place. Well, let's try and lift him, because that's the best we got. All right. With that, we get it. We only get one die. So this is gonna be tough. All right, one orange die. Medium difficulty. We got it. Uh, nope. All right, roll again. Need at least two. Mm, nothing. Oof. Um, yeah. Nothing to modify it. All right. Uh, feel the outcomes. Zero. You slide in through the basement window. When you land, the piglet starts screeching louder and runs off when you step towards it. You finally catch it when it darts out from under a shelf. It is somehow even louder than before and is thrashing about, kicking at you. You get the piglet over your head up towards the window, but right when it is only a hair away, it slips from your grasp and lands on your face. Its hooves bruise you as it kicks at your face. You drop the stupid creature to the ground, resoundingly finished with this affair. Climb out of the basement and leave. So give 53 to the adventurer. Wounded, injured, weary, you've seen better days. The best course of action would probably be to avoid physical strain or seek treatment from a medical professional. In thievery, fighting, and, uh, tent skill checks, get one uh, failure. At settlements and not in a scene, you may spend two gold to hasten one. All right. Uh, oh, no, that actually, that goes with my character. Then I need, uh, let's go with the shoe bill. And one, two, three gonna be bad till Friday. Oof. 
Oh well. Um. Oh hey, thanks for the follow, B fan. Sorry I didn't uh, say anything earlier. Uh, I'm a little focused on trying to read through all this. It's a lot of a lot of info. All right, and then return the event to the bottom. And end of scene. All right, moving to Wednesday. Now, we're going to move all the way back to Chabar. So, yeah, let's meet Fan's friends. Chunk, chunk. Meet Fan's friends, 370. Whoa! Oh, I opened something. Hold on. 370. 370. Yep. Fan's instructions take you to a plain-faced wooden building on the far side of Chabar, away from the body of the town, with a specific knock you were let inside. A small group of alpine marmots, what do they look like? Ah, no picture. Are inside, tending to snakes and writing books. Their drudgery ceases when you enter. You divulge fans' news to them about their sacred relic being located in Yezdin. Gossip buzzes about the room, which is silenced with a gesture from an alpine marmot in cream-colored robes. I am Wayan, leader of the Awakened. You must make preparations for the retrieval of our sacred talisman, though we can't work with anyone lacking faith or grit. You must show us your dedication before we can accept your help. You have a thievery tag. No, I don't. If you offer, you may return an item to the library instead of spending six uh, gold. So we can offer a tribute for six gold. Gosh. I mean, the feather duster... I don't want to intimidate, so yeah, we're gonna... We're gonna return the feather duster. It's worth five gold, so we're actually saving one on that, and... Well, it could be useful. It hasn't been yet, so... All right, tucked away. Offer a tribute. Woyan takes the offering with a hint of distrust. How much can said of one... Or how much can be said of one who shows their loyalty in the material? After the words left her mouth, regret is plain on her face. Though our cause is large, our resources are small. I should not spurn your help. Let me repay you for my arrogance. From among a cluttered shelf in the room, she gives you an item. Sometimes I thought we may have... Uh, something I thought we may have need of, but no longer do. Forgiving her, you accept the object. Give 32 from the library to the adventurer. Well, let's see. It's an ocarina. Doo -doo -doo -doo. After years of practice and discipline, enlightened Bobak Marmots play timeless music with ocarinas to bridge our world with the spirit world. Recall, roll, re-roll up to four dice, and convince, re-roll up to two dice. Ooh, I like that. I'm gonna hang on to that as long as I can. All right. Woyan directs you and two of her acolytes to follow her outside. Now for the next phase of our plan. She leads you to a house in a quiet suburb. The property is lined by trees with an elderly mole out front tidying up her yard. The marmot nods at the senior. That mole there, she's the former mining chief that maintained the tunnels in Yezdin. Inside her home, she'll have the blueprints and layouts of the underground city. We need to get inside and get those plans. Do you have a loud tag? Uh, no. Sneak inside to locate maps or force a tree down as a distraction. Well, force a tree down is easy and I have the sledgehammer, which gives me two successes automatically. Let's do that. So we're still gonna roll. And that is a sword. Sweet, we got three swords and we got two successes. On top of that. Um. Mm, Gunpowder items. Oh boy. But yeah, we got four plus. The tree stands no chance. You hit it and it is ripped from the ground, roots and all. Sledgehammer's pretty good. Comes down with a thunderous crash and scares the mole so badly she faints. Not what you wanted, but it works. Wayan and her followers sneak inside to steal the documents while you tell onlookers in the street that everything is under control. The marmots make it out in time, as a bare bystander calls for guards to investigate the area. Wei Yan looks at your handiwork with approval. Raw strength isn't a virtue we hold dear, but I'm sure it will come in handy during the next step of our plan. We head to Yezdin now. 
honored by the compliment, you are determined to finish to see this through to the end. You earn two prestige. We're up to four. Uh, return Sleeping Malice from the Adventurer to the Library. Oh, yep. That's the quest. So, 141. One forty one, I gotta find it in here. Uh, yeah. And you have sixty two from the library to the adventurer. Determined, no matter what kind of hardships await you, feel like you can take it all on with the strength and vigor of three spectacled bowls. In a skill check, you may discard to get one. If you are afraid, discard to return it to the thing. So become unafraid. But uh, we can get a success from that. And then give 154 to the adventurer. Sleeping Malice Part 2. Our sacred relic is in the... Oh, yeah. Our sacred relic is in the hands of those traitorous hypocrite monks. They live atop the temples of Yezdin, sleeping with their eyes wide open. Join us, the Awakened, as we regain our relic. With the map of the old tunnels you helped us obtain, we'll get inside with ease. So that's infiltrate the temples at Yezdin. Yes, uh, back to Yezdin, eh? We'll go back to that later, I think. But yeah, that's a second quest for us. Um, we're on low on space. And uh, no partner, so that's the end of the scene. All right, and then, yeah, let's move on to Thursday. And let me uh, get some water. So we are wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. We are nearly halfway through the game. How long has it taken us? 40 minutes. What, really? Oh my God, it's just zipped by. I didn't even notice. Ooh, let me take off this flannel. I'm getting a little warm. What is it? Oh, it's about 79 in here. 6.30 at night. Oh well. All right, so now the thing is, oop, and I took that. Now here's the thing. Could move on to Sarawar, but I want to check out this ski resort. So we're gonna just do that. We're gonna check out the ski resort, which is four. Oh, that's gonna take forever. Four. Refined folks line up to experience all the winter wonderland activities hosted by Resort Kerabash. Instructors are posted at every activity, able to introduce and educate anyone wanting to try something new. Of these outer spots, downhill skiing is the most popular, followed by an all-you-can-eat buffet inside. Most of these pastimes, though, carry a costly price tag. One incident is not in harmony with this place of luxurious joy. A scarf-draped gecko moves about, moves about the crowds. Has anyone seen my bag? Dull gray with yellow tassels. Anyone? I need it. It has my personal belongings, including my favorite book in it. Staff gravitate to her, but are unable to locate the missing item. Explore the resort for the lost bag? Uh, maybe. I got one of each. I don't have an explore action, really. Um, oh yeah, and I forgot. I had one less because I was wounded, but I had five. It was still four plus, so that's fine. Um... Hmm. Yeah, let's help out. Explore the resort for the lost bag. All right. So we get a minus one because of wounded. And we're going to have an orange and a green die for this one. All right. Let's see if we can get it. Um, nope. Let's try it one more time. Uh, no, nothing. I could get a single one if I discard that determined, but nope, we just failed. Burp, burp, burp. Zero. 
You agree to help the gecko and explore around. It's not in the main area here at the resort, so you go up into the ski slopes. Excuse me. The, uh... The wider trails don't hold the bag either, so you wander into the woods. The snows here in the wilds go up to your chest height, and you have to fight through it. The deep powder encases you in a wretched cold. You make your way back to the resort and tell the gecko you can't find anything. She continues the search on her own. What an awesome day you've had. Instead of enjoying any of the attractions that renowned Carabash had to offer, you were instead supping on the bitter chill that old Mother Winter got for you. Why did you think that today was going to be fun? Give 56 from the library to the adventurer. Come on. Come on, where's that? 56. Freezing! Cold and weary. Thanks to your recent adventures, you're cold to the bone, a walking ice cube. In skill checks, the number of dice you can use is reduced by two. You have warm discard. I don't have warm. Oof. We'll use sloth on that. One, two, three. Yep. Well, dip. At least we'll stop being wounded tomorrow, so that'll help. End of scene. All right. Friday. We are no longer wounded. That goes to 53. And, yeah. Should I go back to the hot springs? I kind of want to check it out, but I don't know. Generally, 50 status are bad and ugh, good. Frozen is the worst. Yeah, that's, it seems really rough. And it doesn't look, all I can do is get warm, I guess. Which, maybe there's something at the ski resort that can go warm. Hot springs, hot springs would give me warm. So let's do the hot springs today. Bam, six. All right, the Inn of Wet Feathers is the main attraction of Chabar, city of hot springs. Relaxing pipe music can be heard even before you enter, and upon going through the doors, you are welcomed by the deep bow of an emperor penguin, the innkeeper Ranut. He squawks enthusiastically about how busy it is this time of year and how proud he is of his little resort. My staff can barely keep up with all the peak season work. He looks at you for a brief moment. You don't happen to need a job, do you? Um, yeah, kind of, but uh, yeah, we're going to spend our day here to hopefully warm up. So spending two, right, right down, back down to ten. The Emperor Penguin accepts your payment and leads you to the dressing room. Leaving your possessions here, you step through the warm steam. Does the library have 286 available? Let's find out. 286. Yes. The springs are inviting with bountiful of animal folks relaxing in the waters. You're eager to join them and let all your worries disappear. Feeling rejuvenated, a dwarf crocodile floats next to you with a crooked smile. These prices are practically like robbery. I like it. She stretches her limbs before shifting upright. I think I've enjoyed the bath enough for the outrageous price of entry. What do you say? Need someone to look after you? You can call me Dasoka. You feel it's probably safer to let her follow you compared to declining. Not because she makes you feel safe. Quite the opposite. So, return all weary statuses to the library. Cool. So, we can get rid of this. That's what I was hoping for. All right. 56. Make sure, yep. Then give zero, that I'm guessing matches more, uh, to the adventurer. Oh, I still have zero. Okay. And I uh, give 286. Dasoga, dwarf crocodile. Rumors say that Dasoga's cruelty stems from having hatched from a deformed egg. She's happy to let those rumors flourish. In battle skill checks, reroll up to two dice. Wow. And I uh, spend two gold on unlock intimidator search to get two successes. Pretty good. So we got her for five. A parrot. 
one, two, three, four, five. I mean, that's one day longer than we're going to be going, but, you know, good to have it there. All right. End of scene. It's Saturday. So, Hot Springs was helpful. We met DeSoga. Hmm. Yeah, it was... Uh... Not talking about the movie. Yeah, 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 I could get into that, but uh, you can click on underlined names for some cool flavor text. Ooh, okay, I yeah, I did that a couple times, but uh, it doesn't seem to always do something, but uh, let's see, what, what we'll do next. Um, well, we're about halfway through, so maybe we should get back to the main quest. Yeah, let's do that. So we're gonna chunk, chunk over there. And we are on the mountains. We're gonna do an event. So the adventurer is exhausted. No. Selling Crestland Mountain, 246. Bouquet. No, that can't be right. Right. I keep forgetting. The book versus the cards, I know, that's, it's... At the same time, though, I feel like that would have come up in playtesting, so maybe I shouldn't blame myself so much. Whatever. Uh, here we go. Last night, the mountains were pounded by sheets of snow. Much of the trails today have been slow going from the deep drifts, with snow slides being a common hampering. Avalanches, too, were numerous in the wake of late night storm, last night's storm, filling the air with distant booming echoes when they give way and slide down the mountains. In time, a din from the east draws your attention to a diminutive village by the roadside. Polecats, ducks, and a lion are outside, digging out the blocked entrances of snow-swallowed homes. Reptile parents search the white mounds through their village, crying out the names of their missing offspring. Uh-oh. Rept reptiles in the snow. Not safe. These poor folk could use the aid of a courageous adventurer. If you search, each explorer tag gives you one extra. I don't have... Yep, no explorer tags. Oh, well. Uh, search for buried folk is hard. Shovel snow away from buildings, which is medium. <sighs> Search for buried folks. Uh, I can get... I can spend two with the Soga to guarantee the... Uh, well, almost guarantee the... If I can get at least one eye, which I think I can do because I have two communication... So we're going to do search for buried folk. All right. Bring these out for two light blues. All right. Move on. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. All right. We got one. We got one, so I could spend two. Get another one from DeSoga. Uh, no, I don't have two less dice because I became unfrozen when I went to the hot springs. But yeah, thanks for keeping, keeping on top of that. But uh, got rid of it. Um, I am gonna try one more time. Two, okay. Um, is hard, do you need two successes or four? Uh, hold on. Okay, three successes. So I'm just going to use those two there. Combined with determined that I'm going to discard. Okay, and that gives me a success. Plowing your way to the village, you join in the search for the reptile kids. Peeking around the houses and drifts, you locate the missing children. A lizard and turtle twins were under a mound of snow. They've been caught in the snows, which the cold slowed down their metabolism to the point they couldn't move. 
The village's lion elder then kisses you for locating the youngins. She puts her paw on your chest. You welcome here any time. You will always have a place here to return to, should you ever give up the adventurer's life. That's nice. Like thunder, a great roar resounds in the distance and shakes the earth. Another slow snow slide has occurred right in the direction of where you were heading. You earn one prestige. Take 180 from the library and place it to the space within the adventurer's figure. Place it to the space with the adventurer's figure. Snow avalanche. Large snow drifts have billowed down from the mountains, blocking the road. Moving from this space costs one extra movement unless you have flight. Okay. Then we will uh, drop shoe bill on that. One, two, three, four. Okay. And uh, return the drawn event to the bottom of the deck. There we go. Part is three. Yep. Thank you. End of scene. Sunday. All right. And it only it costs us one to leave, but we were only going to move one anyways. So we're in Sarawar, and we're going to continue with Chasing Legends. Do -do -do. You strengthened your resolve by visiting the birthplace of White Fang, your hero. Now you would just have to find him and to make your dream come true. You should go question Kaperit, White Fang's old storied enemy. And that is 89. You knock on the door of the imposing manor near the market. Rather than size, it is the subdued, measured eloquence, elegance that makes the two-story house stand out. The yard is impeccably cut, the rose bushes neat, and even the open window on the second floor glimmers cleanly in the sun. It's the perfect home for the villain. Inside, await inside awaits White Fang's old enemy, Kafari. Your intuition tells you she, if anyone, knows where the legendary adventurer has gone. Who are you? A big crocodile asks as he opens the door. Oh, oh he's got a hat. Send it from dragons. Proudly, you state you're a famous adventurer on an important quest. The moment you mention White Fang, however, the crocodile slams the door in your face. Rude, but you're sure heroes of stories won't be stopped by just that. So unlock the door. Which we have Soga's help on that. We'll climb through the window. Let's... Yeah, let's unlock the door. So I don't really have any thiefery, but I have a fight. And we have DeSoga as a backup. So I just gotta get something. So here we go. Rolling for the De Pinci. Uh, yes, we got two. Success! You tinker for time, and eventually the lock snaps open, letting you inside. You don't have to go far, however, until you come across a living room and three figures waiting for you. The smallest of them sits in an appropriately sized armchair looking at you. Um. Hmm. So this is the ranch sneaking around. Anything you have to say for yourself? The speaker is an old dwarf crocodile who regards you with an expression of utter malice with two bigger crocodiles at her side. That must be Kafirit. You ask if she knows where White Fang is. Her expression turns even more sour. She grips her cane tighter. Of course. And why do you invoke the name of that wretch? Unable to resist, you launch into your usual spiel of your hero, but you barely get started before she cuts you off. Enough, brick mortar. Let's teach this little dreamer a lesson. All three crocodiles start advancing on you. Oh boy. Uh, I could go fight, and I can re-roll... Gosh, uh, let's go with a fight. It's hard. But we got some options with that. So, we got one die. We get to re-roll two of them. 
And uh, if we can get two sword and one eye with the sledgehammer, we will get a success. So let's aim for that. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I need one more sword. Or I already rerolled hers. Uh. Ah, da, da, da. What are we doing? Fight. Mm, can't do it for that. Hmm. If I reroll all of them, not a perception thing. Yeah, we're just gonna reroll all of them and hope for the best. Two swords and an eye. Let's go. Uh, two swords. No eyes. Mm. Well, two is not the worst. Not great, though. So, let's see how that goes. I guess it's still a failure, but uh, you face your foes with courage, but that alone doesn't get you far. The crocodiles overwhelm and uh, beat you down. You have some guts, Kafarit says while you lie defeated on the floor. Such a small fry who knows the stories of me, yet you still dared. I trust one lesson was enough. You groan that you just wanted to meet your hero. The disdain in the dwarf crocodile's gaze pierces you like a knife, and she motions to her lackey. He brings a map and points to Rienstum's countryside where White Fang retired. Go meet that wretch then. Kefiri spits out. Someone is bound to be disappointed. But do not dream this information comes free. When I ask something, you obey. Now get lost! Licking your wounds, you leave her house. You earn one prestige. Go! Uh, return chasing legends to the box. Turned, give 53 to the adventurer. I'm guessing that's like wounded. I think that would be that was the same wounded we already had. Wounded. Blech. Um, give 221. Gosh, it was just there. Should have read ahead. 221. Chasing Legends Part 3. Following in White Fang's footsteps, you clashed with his old enemy, and you found out that the legendary adventurer retired to the countryside near Rienstum. It is time to meet your hero and bring this chapter to a close. One space east of Rienstum. Oh, well, we'll just move. Same marker. Rienstum. One space east. All right. Find White Fang. There we go. Still gotta get back to Yezdin at some point. I do really want to do the Tishun at some point. But that's the end of the scene. Monday. Second to last day. So. So when we land on the next day, that's just it, right? I don't get to do anything on that day? Yep, I guess so. Well, okay. Monday, our last Monday. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see what I can do with the time I have left. Not a lot. Hmm. 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 I could. Yeah, if I move over there, I just kind of get stuck. Help, folk. Do I have to? Okay, that's just a may assist. I'll help folks in the avalanche. Yep. Let's go do that. Help folks. 299. 
The mountain road has been buried in an implacable wall of snow. An unfortunate party of travelers was caught under it when it fell from higher up. An ox is strapped to a cargo wagon that was swallowed by the sudden shift of snow, braying and struggling. It's marbled polecat. Hmm? Owner is digging it free with only her paws. Other travelers are helping her, but more trying to get warm. After being caught in the slide, clumps of white still cling to them. In all of them, you see plain fear. They've divided their attention between survival and keeping an eye on the mountain, glancing up the slope. More snow at any time and any volume could come down on them with least lethal force. But you have warm. No. If you observe, each sentinel tag gives you one. Okay. I don't have any sentinel tags. So, force the wagon off the snow. Or observe the mountains. Let's force the wagon. All right. So this is a fight check. Well, it's not a fight. It's a a uh, battle sword. Here we go. It's medium. We got one, and I can re-roll. So I'm gonna re-roll these two. Come on, give me one more. Ow! All right, let's re-roll all of them. Come on now. Oh bam There we go. Two. The rest of the group is working on the wagon, but their loosening of the snow only goes so far. Such as it is, you lend your adventurer's strength. Several items on the cart are crushed into useless waste from the thuggish thwack you used to free it. A moment later, more snow from above slides down the slope, burying the spot where the wagon just was. You save the vehicle and most of its contents, earning a tired praise from the marbled polecat owner. With folks in better shape and the wagon safe, it's time to get out of here before any more snow comes down on you. Somehow, you have to get through these filled roads if anyone here wants to escape this treacherous mountain trail. This wouldn't be an easy job to do on a good day. And this is not turning out to be a good one. Your worn body protests with aches as you move. It's going to be something to g it's, it's going to be something to get you out of this. At least the other survivors will help out. Uh, score tag. I think got one. Not helpful. Figure out an alternative solution or plu a route through the snow. Well, we're going to figure out an alternative solution because it's easy and I can do two light blue and a green. All right. Here we go. Oh, I should have gotten a... Well, that's fine. I should have gotten a f thing anyways, because with my sledgehammer, I get two successes on a force. So I actually should have gotten four. Oops. Well, whatever. Whoops. That was that. Okay. Well, I got one. Let's re-roll. I can do better than that. Three. Ah, after having a hard think, you come up with something that might work. You suggest putting the ox behind the cart and pushing it forward as an auxiliary snowplow. You put in the cart before the ox. Smart kid. Uh, to get started, everyone could empty all the water they have onto the snow. Dangerous to be without a drink while traveling, but the combined dosage would melt a track for the wheels to go through. Trusting your judgment over their own, they do as they say. They empty their canteens and water skins over the snow and put the ox to work. The combined action, plus hours of work, get you through the drifts. On the other side of the blockage, the polecat pats the vacant seat on her wagon. Uh, need a lift? I can take you for a while, at least. You earn one prestige. Uh, and you may move your figure one space. So let's move cha -chunk. And partner would earn something. Return snow avalanche to the library. Oh, that's the one. Okay, um... Time trigger on Tuesday, but it has an entry, you're right. So we still get a final scene. Got it. 
All right, end of scene. And then, ba -doo, do -do, do -do, do -do. harmony has triggered. It's time for the gathering. Page 200. After all the excitement, challenges, and adventure, it is time to unwind for a moment and reflect on your travels. How many adventurers were there in this game? Just one. Do you have an isolated tag? No. You head to the nearest inn, intent on treating yourself to a well-deserved evening, celebrating this leg of your journey. All ready from the outside, you can hear the sounds of lively patrons, suggesting that the establishment is quite full once again. Despite the noise, all heads turn as you enter, curious to see the new arrival. Throw a party or celebrate alone? Oh gosh, I don't think I should throw a party. I kind of only got back to my base thing, so I'll celebrate alone. How much prestige did you get? Seven. Seven, eight. The other folks in the bar keep their eyes on you for a long while, watching you as you seat yourself and order a drink. The general buzz of the tavern lowers and music is replaced with a swarm of chatter. Folks know you by name, and trying to keep their voices hushed, telling each other of all the deeds, great and terrible, that you have performed during your travels. Word gets out that you are here, and more folks from around the area come to ogle at you. If the crowd is any indicator, you have become a renowned adventurer. You are famous! Nice. I always knew it would happen for me, ma. I'm going to Hollywood to be in the moving picture business. All right. End of game. So saving the game? I will uh do that off stream. Um, yeah, yeah, this game is pretty fun. I was kind of nervous because I'm like, it, the system doesn't seem that great from like a uh, surface level just on its own, but it's really the book of adventures that brings it all together. Like each system, if it was just by itself, would just be like, eh, whatever. But like having that book and like reading through this fun adventure, it's really fun. So I'm super excited to play more of this. I'll play more on stream sometime. And I'm going to play with my group, so it'll be kind of going back and forth. So when you guys see more again, he'll be a little different. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll find out what that's like. He, he's going to go on his own adventures on his own time. But thanks very much for watching. Please take the time to follow and subscribe if you'd be so kind. Check out all the socials down below. And go check out the Discord, which uh, I'll put in right now. There we go. Yeah, go join the Discord. And yeah, we're gonna raid over to somebody. So let me uh, switch over to the end screen. There we go. Thanks for showing this great game. Hey, thank you for watching. It was, yeah, it's pretty great. I'm super excited to play this with a bigger group and super excited to do more streams of it. They'll definitely be coming. You know, I might go with, uh, might go with the actual board because this is nice, but uh, yeah, I'm just probably going to let this air out so that it kind of is a little less floppy on the ends. But uh, yeah, we're going to see who we're going to raid over to. Just a minute. see who is online right now um nobody board game related let's see if anybody else is playing I, unlikely but it's a uh, nice search nice search can't search okay well we'll just send you all over to pixel playing pokemon scarlet slash violet and you can enjoy that All right, let Pinksel know I sent you. Have a great rest of your day. Go have some adventures in your own lands of Galzir. Just wait until uh, I have some here. It's a pretty fun game. All right, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye.